Okay, so dinosaurs are usually seen as the ultimate animals, either because of their huge size, claws and jaws, or rogues gallery of spikes and horns. But of course, they're not all like this, and we'll actually focus on one of these lesser known types of dinosaurs, the alvarosauroids. And although they might not be the most intimidating creatures, they are still very weird and fascinating in their own way. First off, let's give a quick icebreaker for alvarosauroids. They were rather small for dinosaurs, with most species like Mononychus or Alvarosaurus being about a meter in length, with some of the larger ones like Haplochiris only getting twice as large at two meters. Almost all have been found on the continents of Asia and South America. However, a new species known as Triarchuncus prairiensis has recently been found and described in North America, living alongside legendary dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops. Alvarosauroids are rather bird-like in appearance, having slender bodies with long legs. Their snouts were elongated and tube-shaped, with many small teeth. And due to a fossil of the Alvarosauroid Shivuia having feathers, we know that presumably all of these animals were covered in at minimum light plumage, which may seem weird. However, the more we learn about dinosaurs, the less and less this seems to be an uncommon feature. The first oddity of this family is where they actually fit into the dinosaur taxonomic tree. Of course, we've always known they're theropods. The bipedal, usually carnivorous dinosaurs, where birds are also technically grouped. In fact, alvarosaurids were originally believed to be early flightless birds, due to a few traits they shared with birds that we'll get into later. However, this was later thrown away in favor of the idea they were close kin to ornithomimosaurs, another set of nimble bird-like dinosaurs. However, this idea was also put aside when it was discovered many of the alvarosaurids' bird-like traits are not due to their evolution from ornithomimosaurs, but instead they evolved independently later down the line. This has made classifying alvarosaurs very difficult, and are now classified as being a basal member of the Menoraptoran dinosaurs, a group of other bird-like theropods such as Ovaraptoridae and Dromaeosaurs. Now, let's look at the real weird stuff. By far the most visible of their odd traits is the fingers, or really lack of fingers. On already stubby looking arms, alvarosauroids have three claws, however two of these fingers are incredibly reduced to the point they are vestigial. One claw, however, has grown to the point where it encompasses the entire hand, so the arms just look like one big finger instead of, you know, an arm. For earlier species, this feature isn't nearly as defined, and some have all three of their fingers intact and normal shaped. Limbs getting weaker and smaller while losing fingers is not uncommon for theropods like alvarosauroids. Just look at T-Rex or abelosaurids. But alvarosaurs' arms aren't actually flimsy. In fact, they are completely built. They have something called a keeled sternum, which is essentially an enlarged sternum that runs perpendicular to the ribs and acts as an anchor for huge muscles that power the arms. This might sound familiar for any ornithologists out there, as this is also what birds have and allows them to fly. This trait, along with fused wrist bones and others, are the original reason these animals were thought to be early birds. Although, ironically, even though early birds like Archaeopteryx had none of these flying traits and still managed some form of flight, Averosaurs had all of the needed body traits to fly, but obviously could not due to their stubby little arm nubs. And it's not like the animals once used the arms and just never lost their muscles. Creatures who do lose the reason for having muscular limbs, such as birds who lose the ability to fly, also lose their strength, evolutionarily speaking, very, very fast. So, here we are, stuck with an animal with great upper body strength, with seemingly no way to use it. I mean, what could those claws possibly have been used for? Well, the answer might be rather simple. See, we usually look at dinosaurs as being either herbivores or carnivores, with a few piscivores sprinkled in as well. However, one diet usually forgotten in the paleo world is insectivore, which is probably what alvarosaurs were. Presumably, these animals acted as the prehistoric equivalent of anteaters. Using their powerful arms and singular claw as a jackhammer, they would break into termite mounds. They would then use their narrow beak and many small teeth to catch dozens of small insects for nourishment. Maybe they even had a long tongue, however this of course does not show up in the fossil record. One alvarosauroid, Bonicus, even has a finger with quite a lot of flexibility, 
possibly hinting that it used its finger to probe out insects within trees or mounds, just like the modern Adonis of the animal kingdom, the Ai. However, even after all of this has been said, there's a few things holding Alvarosaurus from using their arms as proposed, most namely their arms are so short they would have to be right next to a mound in order to hit it. So maybe Alvarosaurus filled some niche we don't even know about. With that all being said, although Alvarosaurids are certainly one of the most forgotten of the dinosaurs, they are definitely not uninteresting, and hopefully we learn more about these odd little creatures later down the line. As always, uh, thanks for the wonderful pictures I used in this video. I'm glad I was able to shine some light on Alvarosaurus, and they proved to be very interesting in their own right. Uh, my next video is going to be one I've thought about and have worked on for a while, uh, so get ready for that one. As always, thanks for watching until the end, and see ya!